China is not actually a water-poor country. Its per capita freshwater availability in 1999 reached 2,128 cubic meters per year, twice the internationally recognized threshold where a country is considered water scarce. However, the problem is that there is no such thing as an average water availability for Chinese citizens. More specifically, the geographical and temporal inequality of China's freshwater resource distribution means some parts of the country are water abundant. Meanwhile, other parts suffer from drought and desertification, not to mention declining water quality. The Yellow River, or Huanghe in China, has experienced periods of drought since 1972, drying up in some parts for 22 out of the next 28 years. The river, once dubbed China's sorrow due to its devastating floods, has now fallen victim to over-exploitation, pollution, and desert encroachment. Meanwhile, in southern China, the Yangtze River, or commonly known as Changjiang, on the contrary, is often hit by major floods. To address the imbalance in water resource availability between the water-rich Yangtze River and the drier Yellow River in the north, the Chinese government is building the monumental South-North Water Transfer, or SNWT, project. This project itself was initiated by Chinese politician Mao Zedong as an answer to China's water problems since 1952. The giant project aims to divert 48 billion cubic meters of water annually from the Yangtze River Basin to the Yellow River through a series of inter-basin transfer canals. The transfer design includes three routes starting from the east, middle, and west, each with varying degrees of technical complexity, feasibility, and potential socio-ecological impacts. Interbasin transfers on this scale have never been attempted elsewhere in the world. The South-North Water Transfer Project in China is one of the largest water infrastructure initiatives in the world designed to address water shortages in northern China. This ambitious project marks the Chinese government's efforts to improve the uneven distribution of water resources between the water-rich southern region and the arid northern region. China has a very densely populated area, the North China Plain or 3H, consisting of the Hai, Huang or Yellow, and Huai rivers. This plain is home to more than 25% of China's population and contributes an even higher share of GDP. Despite being traversed by major rivers and having productive aquifers, the 3H basin faces severe water scarcity. The population in this region is nearly 450 million, with 300 to 325 million living in the coastal plains. Renewable water per capita is only about 500 cubic meters per year. Even in the high basin, it is less than 350 cubic meters per year. No other region in the world with such a large population has to face such little renewable water. To address this acute water scarcity, the Chinese government is undertaking an ambitious mega-project, the South-North Water Transfer Project, or SNWTP. This project, if fully realized, could divert up to 50 cubic kilometers per year of water from the Yangtze River Basin to the North China Plain. This will greatly alleviate water scarcity for the 300 to 325 million inhabitants who, even after this project, will still live in a highly water-stressed area. There are three main routes planned in the SNWTP, the Western Route, the Middle Route, and the Eastern Route. 
The western route will divert water from the Yangtze tributaries in the upper reaches through 170-kilometer long tunnels in the upper Yellow River. This route passes through difficult and remote terrain in the Sichuan and Qinghai Mountains. However, there are also long-term plans to divert about 200 cubic kilometers of water per year from the upper reaches of six rivers in southwestern China. These rivers include the Mekong River, the Yarlung Zhangbo or Brahmaputra River, and the Salween River. The flow from these rivers will flow into the Yangtze River, the Yellow River, and finally to the arid areas of North China through reservoirs, tunnels, and natural rivers. However, this project was considered too large and costly to implement at the time. This is because these rivers are transboundary and the water transfer process impacts a number of countries such as India and Bangladesh in South Asia as well as Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam in Southeast Asia. The middle route takes water from the Danjiangko Reservoir on the Han River, a major left bank tributary of the middle Yangtze. This route crosses the upper Huai River and the Yellow River downstream of the Xiaolangdi Dam, then heads to Beijing along the foothills of the Taihang Mountains. To realize this, the project had to involve raising the height of the Danjiangko Reservoir from 162 meters to 176.6 meters above sea level. The increase in reservoir height also allows for an increase in water height from 157 meters to 170 meters above sea level. The initial phase of the middle route will divert 9 to 13 cubic kilometers per year at a cost of about $7 billion plus an additional $3 billion mainly for the relocation of 275,000 people and water replacement for the Han River. The canal is constructed to create a continuous downward flow from the Danjiangko Reservoir to Beijing without requiring pumping stations. Thus, the construction of two tunnels under the Yellow River is necessary to divert the canal flow. Specifically, the Eastern Route or Jiangdu Hydro Project takes water from the Yangtze about 100 kilometers downstream of Nanjing and 250 kilometers from the sea. This route utilizes a network of mostly existing rivers, lakes, reservoirs, and canals up to the Shandong border, including the historic Grand Canal. After that, water from the Yangtze River will be diverted into a canal at Jiangdu where a giant pumping station with a capacity of 400 cubic meters or 12.6 cubic kilometers per year if operated continuously. Then, the water will be pumped by stations along the Grand Canal, through tunnels under the Yellow River, as well as along waterways to reservoirs near Tianjin. Construction of the Eastern Route officially began on December 27, 2002. This project experienced delays due to water pollution affecting the route. Fortunately, the project was completed and water began entering Shandong in 2014. By October 2017, the water flow had reached Tianjin. In the end, this route has a length of more than 1,152 kilometers and is equipped with 23 pumping stations with a power capacity of 454 megawatts. This is all thanks to the tunnels crossing under the Yellow River located on the border of Dongping and Dongyi in Shandong province. This crossing consists of two horizontal tunnels with a diameter of 9.3 meters placed 70 meters below the riverbed of the Yellow River. To facilitate this water transfer process, pumping stations have to raise water from the Yangtze to the Yellow River crossing and further north so that the water will flow downhill in the waterway. 
This is because the topography of the Yangtze Plain, especially in the North China Plain, differs from other Chinese plains. In the next stage, the flow can be increased to 20 cubic kilometers with additional water transfer from the Yangtze to the Lower Han. The eastern route will also be built in stages. The next stage is estimated to cost $3 billion and another $4 billion for additional costs, especially pollution control. Although the cost is very high, China has the financial capacity for this project, equivalent to the Three Gorges Dam project on the Yangtze River. Moreover, the project also connects two of China's mega water infrastructures, the Three Gorges Dam project and the South to North Water Transfer project. Once completed, this project is expected to increase the amount of water diverted from the middle route of the water transfer project to North China. Currently, this water transfer route has a length of about 1,264 kilometers, which initially provided 9.5 cubic kilometers of water annually. According to the plan, the project is scheduled to increase its transfer route to 12 to 13 cubic kilometers per year. Although this project will bring great benefits to the people of North China who have dry land, unfortunately this project also poses other major challenges. This challenge comes from the settlement of around 330,000 people living near the Danjiangko Reservoir and the lowlands along the project route. To realize this mega project, Chinese officials began relocating residents from Hubei and Henan provinces in central China on October 18, 2009. Some residents also said that officials had forced them to sign relocation agreements. Scientists have revealed that this water transfer project will actually increase the loss of water supply in large quantities due to evaporation. Although the exact amount of loss due to evaporation is not known for certain. However, this may be improved in the future as more water is transferred and flow rates continue to increase. In addition, many parties have begun to worry that this project will have a negative impact on the environment, especially causing water pollution problems. Pollution from factories along the eastern route can cause water to be unfit for drinking. Meanwhile, the diversion of water from the Yangtze River Basin to the north is also likely to exacerbate pollution problems in the Yangtze River. This problem has also been exacerbated since the construction of the Three Gorges Dam. Fortunately, this problem can be overcome in several ways. A number of experts have suggested that conservation and increased efficiency in water use can help reduce water problems in China without endangering the environment and displacing large populations. But for now, the Chinese government has issued regulations prohibiting industrial players from building their factories around river flows so that the water can still be drunk. <laughs>